Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to be discussing state of charge drift with different EG4 batteries. This isn't really an EG4 specific issue. This can happen with any of the lithium iron phosphate batteries. And the larger your battery bank, the more chance of this happening. These batteries right here are the EG4 Life Power 4 batteries, and there's the version 2 all the way at the top. So that's actually a different BMS in that battery but you're still going to see it. So let's say you had a full rack of all of either type of these Life Power 4 batteries. They could eventually start to drift away from each other. And this isn't specific to the EG4 rack batteries. The wall mounts can drift as well. So the state of charge with those can get out of balance. So whether it's the indoor or outdoor wall mount batteries. And EG4 has a remedy for that, top and bottom balancing. They have a link to that. I can actually put in the description on how to remedy the state of charge drift. And I'll actually discuss that more here in a minute. But another good question is, why does it happen? So a lot of people have this issue. And like I said, whether they're using EG4 batteries or not, the remedy is going to be pretty similar. So there's a couple different things. So a small parasitic load can cause that state of charge drift. So in other words, a load so slight that it doesn't even register on the BMS. And so the BMS basically has no clue that there's a small amount of power leaking out. So if you had a good example would be if you had three or four wall mount batteries, you've got a pretty large capacity there, but you just had one inverter on it, let's say a 12,000 XP, and that idle consumption is right around 90 watts, right on those, somewhere in that area, 80 to 90 watts. And that is constantly drawing on those batteries. But if you split it between all those wall mounts, it's a very small load. So the BMS isn't really calibrated to look out for something that small. But if you weren't using those batteries every day, and that's another thing to cover here in a minute, but if you weren't using those batteries every day, they weren't being cycled up and down, and it was constantly drawing that small amount of wattage, by the time you start using it again, then you're gonna notice that once the BMS realizes, whether that's all the way at the bottom, all the way at the top, when you put a large load on it, and let's say they'd been sitting weeks with that draw on it not being recharged, you're going to have a real issue there. People will suddenly report on like the forum or Facebook and they'll say my batteries dropped to zero immediately and I have no power. I wouldn't say that situation is super common, but that is one reason why people could encounter that issue. And that's not really so much as a state of charge drift as a calibration issue altogether. So drift is sort of like if you have these rack batteries here or if you have wall mount batteries and you're noticing your state of charge on one is 70%. The other is 80%, and people get really concerned with that, especially I've seen people concerned when it's 2% off. So that was an extreme case that I pointed out before with that parasitic load, but that also can attribute to even a small state of charge difference. But the larger reason why you're going to have an issue like that is these packs aren't being fully charged, and that's actually really important. Lithium iron phosphate is meant to be cycled. I'm editing the video now, but this is actually a good example of what I was talking about. It's been either raining or heavy usage due to air conditioning, and I haven't charged fully in probably three days. So you guys can see three indicator lights there. And on the little wall mount battery, we have 52%. On the larger indoor wall mount batteries, we have 53%. And the last indoor wall mount battery is at 46%. So you can see a widespread between them all. And that's pretty typical if you haven't charged fully in three, four days. So here you can see on the monitor app, I do have communication with all of my different wall mount batteries. That'd be outdoor, indoor, and that small wall mount battery. And the state of charge spread that I mentioned before, you can see it here. One is at 60%, 69%. But what I wanted to touch on was the voltage. That's actually the important part. Because the state of charge, like I said before, the calibration can be off as far as... Uh, you know, how much is left in the battery, but the voltage actually tells the real tale there. And you can see my voltage is not far apart, but the remedy is the same for both, whether it's a state of charge issue and the BMS needs to be recalibrated or whether you need to balance your packs out with one another, this is going to solve that issue either way, the remedy I'm about to describe. So in the literature that EG4 has on these different types of batteries and how to get everything calibrated and balanced, they mentioned that you could bottom balance these. So in other words, take these all the way down to zero. And then there's another recommendation for top balancing, which is 
charging them all the way fully. So I've experimented with EG4 batteries for well over, I think I'm right around two years, different types of these batteries, Walmart batteries, and other types of batteries all together. And the one thing that has worked for me every single time is a heavy top balance. So if you're using these in closed loop, meaning you have them hooked up to communication with your inverter, it's usually going to charge them right to around 56 something volts, 56.5. It can depend, but it's somewhere in that area. But if that's not happening on a regular basis, you can start to see more and more of a drift. It has to be able to hit that higher voltage and stay there for a bit and all the packs will balance together. But this is a more common, this is something that comes up, I think much more frequently in the winter, especially in an off-grid setup. If people are charging their packs off of solar and they just keep getting less and less sunlight as the winter comes in, as you get nasty weather, and this doesn't have to be just a winter thing, in stormier areas, places that get a rainy season, this is going to happen as well. But if you're not reaching that full state of charge every three, four, five days, you're going to start to see a more dramatic drift. Yeah, and in the winter, my packs, I've seen them before where I'm only getting to around 60, 70, 80% at most. And then we just go right back down in the evening and we've got clouds most of the day the pack can get really far apart. I mean, I've had batteries that read 30% all the way up to 45%. And so as far as state of charge, they look way different than each other. But then once the sun comes out and you get everything fully charged, you may notice, hey, I'm still not getting to the top. That's very irritating because you're like, now I've got the sun and I'm seeing one pack. One of my batteries is still saying 95%. The other one's saying 98%, and then I've got one that's 100%. So I'll show you how to remedy that here on the screen of the inverter itself. Keep in mind, anything I do on the inverter via the screen can be done on the monitor site really easy as well, easier for most people. So this is on the 18K PV screen. Like I said, you can do this on the monitor site, but just to show you guys, it's in advanced. You're going to go all the way down, not all the way, but halfway down. On the settings here it's set to lithium right now lithium type 5 no idea why i had it on the uh one just a minute ago anyway lithium you're gonna move to lead acid and you're gonna set that now keep in mind it depends on what firmware you have with your inverters some of the inverters are going to actually reset when you do that not reset but restart so that may interrupt whatever you're doing, may interrupt the power. Not all the inverters do that now. So you got to verify that first. You can verify that with EG4 or Signature Solar if you're worried about disrupting your power supply. But yeah, they uh, some of them do reset. So that is something to keep in mind here. But you'll set it to lead acid, and then you're going to set your charging parameters. And as you guys can see here, I set mine to 57.5 on the absorb, which they is going to be called different things on different inverters. Some will call it bulk voltage. Uh, either way, that is what the maximum voltage I have it set to, 57.5. And then the float is set to 55. So I'm not going to keep it like this for three, four, five weeks. I'm just doing this to be able to get it top balanced. After that, I'm just going to let the closed loop take back over and that's going to change it to around 56.5 usually and you could always set this to 56.5 some people run in open loop the whole time they never ever used closed loop and that's fine also if that's the way you're set up but if you do that and you still notice that drift then move it up to 57.5 and i think that's when you'll see that difference there so as you guys can see they're not really hard at all you're basically just changing it to open loop lead acid mode, user mode, it depends on the inverter you have. You're gonna go up to 57, 57.5 is really what I prefer to go up to most times. And that's gonna reach that voltage on the battery where it recalibrates the BMS on the battery. The state of charge is gonna be reset. But not only that, the packs themselves, all the batteries themselves can balance with one another. And this isn't specific to off-grid. You can also do it with AC mode. If you guys charge with grid power, you can switch these settings over, charge with that, and then just switch back to closed loop. All of your stuff will go back to normal and everything will be fine. So usually if you're getting plenty of sunshine, a solid charge, you're not gonna need to do this. But every few months, there's not really anything wrong with doing it. It'll just balance everything completely out and it only takes a few minutes. 
you can leave it that way a day, then switch back to closed loop, let everything charge back up in that way. My battery bank here, these EG4 Life Power 4s are not hooked into the rest of my bank via communication. So they just charge and discharge with the wall mount batteries, which do have communication. So it's helpful every now and then for me to get up to that higher voltage. Everything in all the different packs all lines up together. These batteries here aren't EG4 at all. They're hooked into the system. There's a fuse in between these, so that's that's an important thing. If you fuse your battery banks, uh, regardless of the make, model, everything, make sure to have fuses in between your different banks. Yeah, guys, like I said, I'll leave a link in the description to those two guides. So the Life Power 4 1, Life Power 4 2, and this one here, the Life Power 4 version 2, it's going to be about the same remedy as the Walmart battery. Same BMS, same cells, just larger capacity with those. And I'm going to be honest, that top balance is the way to go. It's, it's going to get you there every time. Since I don't charge with the grid in the winter, when I know there's going to be plenty of sun, I do this. Like if, I, if I've had a, a drift and it's been three, four, five, six days of just like barely getting any kind of charge, when I get a decent amount of sunshine and I know it's going to be there for a few days, I will set everything to voltage and have it charge the pack back up that way. And also, hopefully, this video helped for those people with that parasitic load issue also. So these are meant to be cycled. So these are meant to be used constantly up and down. It's actually the healthiest thing to do with lithium iron phosphate. So figure out a way to use your batteries. Use it on a load somewhere. I know a lot of these, a lot of people have these set up for a UPS. So they just want it to be able to have be there in case of an emergency. But it's best to keep these at least cycled a little bit. you got to be able to use these batteries. So there's nothing wrong with having them set up somewhere, basement, garage, or whatever, as a UPS. But if you can create a critical loads panel that it can just run some freezers, that would help cycle the batteries. Yeah, and just in case you guys were worried, if I have it set to a critical loads panel, I won't be ready for a storm. EG4 inverters at this point, most of them do. I don't know if the 6000 XP has it now, but a lot of them have a weather option to where you can have the, the inverter actually keep an eye on the weather for you. And if it looks like there's going to be a severe storm, it will use grid power to charge the batteries back up and get them ready. I know the hybrid models have that. I don't know if the off-grid inverters do. It makes sense that the hybrids would have it because they don't have to switch a relay over. They can just recharge and keep going. But yeah, anyway, that's a cool option to have as well. All right, guys, well, feel free to leave any comments, any questions down below about what I talked about in the video here. If you guys need any further details, just let me know. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.